Now you guys are all clapping, but I gotta let you know that our next speaker is so awful, he can make Murray Rothbard think twice about free speech. Believe me, if you never heard him talk before, that's a true statement. When he isn't using his camera to chase bureaucrats, he's screaming at it on YouTube. Please welcome to the stage, comedian, activist, Twitter troll, Mr. Chris Cantwell. So people were giving me uh, some shit because at Loopy Fest last year I used some recycled material I came off sort of a hack. So today I rewrote my entire speech on the way here. Woo! <laughs> but that really had more to do with I think that there's just like a, a did the fucking world change this week or something? Like, a lot of shit happened. And, um, so that's why I kind of feel like I'm going to be off this page instead of doing my reverse thing where I had what I was going to say. But anyway, hello New York City! Woo! I sounded all excited there, but I, I hate this place. It's terrible. It's not work in progress in New York City. How, how jealous do you think Mike Bloomberg was of Mayor Menino yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> you had I tried to ban soda. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you did a great job of putting this together, man. He sold this place out not once but twice. So let's give a big round of applause for all the FBI agents who bought tickets. Thank you guys for being here. Really glad to have you with us tonight. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Maybe you just fear for your lives and quit your job. Either way, find three times, dude. Um, like, you're right. But people try to make out like anarchists, like we are, you know, violent, dangerous people just because we don't want to have a government. But I came in here. I just put my backpack down in the corner, and not only do I know that nobody's going to report it as a bomb, I know that it is not going to get stolen from because we all understand each other. <laughs> No, it's a robot. Okay, so um, there's a lot that's happened since I since I wrote that speech. One of the things was Dan Halloran uh, got caught trying to rig an election. I don't know if everybody know who Dan Halloran is. I shared a stage with Dan Halloran here last year at uh, Liberty Fest, and Dan, I think, is a perfect example of why political libertarianism will always fail. Because Dan came in here and he said all the right things. He said all the right things. He seemed like an honest guy. I had drinks with him. He said, yeah, I totally get it. He got into office, and he lied, he cheated, and he stole. Shocker, right? Lying, cheating, stealing politician? I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> And I was going to go on and on about that, but then, then there was tax day. You guys all paid, right? No, fuck no! Shh, there's that FBI agent here. Fuck no! And then, you know, and then I thought about going on like a, a you know, taxes are fat, and murmur, murmur, but how re fucking redundant would that be at Anarchy in the NYC? And then my, uh, my, my good friend Rich Paul, uh, he got convicted on eight years worth of drug charges in New Hampshire. And it, it crossed my mind that these people will stop kidnapping, caging, and murdering our people when they fear us more than we fear them, and no sooner. So I thought about coming in here and advocating violence, but that never goes over well, and it would just end with Stefan accusing my parents of child abuse. <laughs> Big old step on while you float chart everybody. <laughs> and then there was the, uh, then there was a false flag terrorist attack in Boston. And they're kind of like, hey, uh, those paramilitary guys over there look kind of shady. But luckily, the FBI assured me that those photos should not be deemed credible. And then there was martial fucking law in Boston. And I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I watched and listened as hundreds of thousands of people were ordered to stay in their homes as militarized police forces roamed the streets in full battle regalia, searching from house to house, looking for a 19-year-old boy with a crock pot. 
They did all this, they did this all day long, and then they called off the stay in the side order at night, and ten minutes later, a civilian found the son of a bitch in their backyard. They called the cops, they put a few holes in the guy, and then they took him to the hospital where you had the pleasure of paying for his fucking medical care. And after that ridiculous display, did any of you listen to the police scanner? The, the, the self-congratulatory nonsense I listened to was absolutely fucking nauseating. It's a great day to be a Boston police officer, one guy said. Another one said, everybody did a great job today. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, you sociopaths didn't catch this guy? You created the conditions that allowed him to remain hidden all fucking day long in the backyard of one of the people you claim to protect. And it wasn't until after you dropped your threat against the homeowner that the homeowner found the son of a bitch in his boat. Woo! <laughs> and having been disarmed by the state of Massachusetts, that homeowner couldn't shoot the son of a bitch himself, so he called you, you shot him. So I, I really think that begs the question, what's so fucking special about you people? <laughs> the government agents all happy about shooting somebody. It's another thing to see the citizenry cheer them on afterwards. People were dancing in the fucking streets after this happened. Fucking savages, everyone! And all of this happened over three people dead. Just to put it into, you know, perspective. Like, a lot more than three people are going to die today from ridiculous things that nobody would freak out about. Hey, they absolutely are. Man. A drone strike will probably kill 300. Right on? I do. Like oh, well, I'm not right on with the drone strike, but you're correct. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what else happened. All these people who said it can't here, uh, it can't happen here, they got proven wrong. All the people who said it's not that bad got proven wrong. All the people who said America is different, they got proven wrong yesterday. Uh, I think when a major city turns into a fucking prison, it's kind of important for us to sound the alarm. If they can do it in Boston, they can do it in New York. If they can do it in New York, they can do it in your city too. And unless we start getting geographically concentrated and arming ourselves, it's entirely possible that we will cross a point of no return. I mean, thank you. I am all for peaceful parenting, I'm all for technology and civil disobedience and all the other positive things that other people are promoting, but folks, I am begging you all to put some urgency behind solving this problem. Multi-generational solutions mean we all die as slaves. It means our children are raised as slaves and will probably die that way too. In just the last week, millions of people flooded into post offices to pay an extortion threat on time, and a lot of them felt really fucking good about it. A bombing was either carried out by the U.S. government or allowed to be carried out by the U.S. government. The U.S. House passed CISPA. The U.S. Senate almost passed gun control, but on the day the first shots of the American Revolution were fired, Boston fell to martial fucking law with no report of resistance whatsoever. And if that happened last week, what will happen next week? Or the week after that, or next month, or next year? We're growing, but they are growing faster, and they are using more and more advanced and sophisticated technologies to kill and to spy and to oppress. If there is a point of no return, we could be passing it at any goddamn minute, and that concept scares the living shit out of me, and it should scare the shit out of you, too. Thank you for having me. My name is Chris Campbell, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Pork Fest in Minnesota. Chris fucking Cantwell. Give it up one more time. Goddamn. He nails it. If you don't like him, I don't want to be your friend. Seriously. Awesome.